Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the Pokeros podcast. This episode was recorded in Mashuko, which is a pottery town located two hours away from Tokyo. I took a bus there to meet my very, very good friend Hiki, who owns and runs an online store selling Japanese lifestyle products and craft. So I got to know Hiki many years ago and we spent a lot of time together when we were living in Tokyo still. And now she has moved to Mashko. So in this conversation, we talk about her new life in the countryside and how she has discovered uh, new craftspeople in Mashko. And I was so happy to also be able to stay in her beautiful traditional Japanese home for two nights and spend time with her lovely kitties. After chatting with Hiki, I'm more inspired by Japanese traditional craft than before. And I hope you enjoy our conversation together as well. Hi everyone, this is Ross from Poker Ross. Welcome to another episode of the Poker Ross podcast. Today I'm very happy to be speaking with my good friend Hiki and we are recording this episode in her beautiful home in Mashiko. Welcome Hiki to our podcast. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you yeah. so much for having me. So, uh, thank you so much for coming all the way to Mexico. Oh, it's so wonderful. Fun. It's so nice to, to be in your lovely home and yeah. to finally meet you after like five years, I yeah, guess. it's been a long time. Yes, and the last time we had a chat on Coffee Talk, which is our IG Live segment that we had. Yeah. Right, about your new life in Mexico. When I had just moved here. Yeah, mm. so Hiki used to have a shop in Rapongi in Tokyo and we were friends for many years in Tokyo and it was a really lovely time that we had together <laughs> and and then, you know, we all moved to, I moved back to Singapore and Hiki is in Mexico now. So Hiki, would you like to share with our listeners more about what you do in yeah. Mexico? Sure. Yeah. I'm Hiki. I have a small business called the Guisu. Yeah which is an online store selling Japanese products, mainly made by small makers, individual artists, um, artisans, hard-to-find objects, something with traditional significance or cultural significance that tell a story to introduce pieces of my native Japan to the world directly from Japan. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I think like Hiki is... One of my friends who had the best taste, like your selection is always so, nice. you know, it's like all these years I've seen the things you selected and I am like, wow, so nice. And you always, I mean, always able to envision like the things you select in a home just like this, like a beautiful Japanese style home, but modern at the same time. So do you feel like these traditional Japanese crafts that, you know, you pick in for your shop? Mm -hmm. Do they like, do you have this hope that people can use it daily and like have a, that kind of lifestyle as yes, well? Yes, I always hope for the products we sell to be practical, not just mm. beautiful, but something with, with beauty is definitely important to have, but something that people can cherish for a long time because most of the pieces that we sell are made with special care, with good thoughtfulness. Mm. So I wouldn't like anything to be something that people enjoy for a very short time and then maybe throw away. Mm. That is not something that we like for anything. Yeah, today. like you make sure that the products in your store are things that people can use for like forever if possible, like for a long time and yeah, the beauty as comes long, out as long as, as they can. As long as mm -hmm. they can. And some of the items actually look nicer like as they age as well. Yeah. You were saying, you're sharing like with like bamboo, for example, mm -hmm. the colors change. Mm. And, yeah, You can yeah. use the way it ages mm. and often it becomes more beautiful. Yeah, and mm. things age differently mm -hmm. as how you use it mm. or maybe where you use it, how often, how, how you maintain it. Mm. So each piece would look different. Mm. Like if we both bought something yes. at the same time and we use it every day, maybe in 10 years' time we mm. compare them, how we, we will probably find good difference. Oh. And that's something very 
special mm. i feel it to be very special yes it is very personal as well and mm-hmm. special unique to yourself yeah and, yeah i love that uh, what kind of craft do you carry in ugrisu the, the products we carry in ugrisu some of them are mm. japanese traditional candles mm-hmm. bamboo crafts or wooden crafts indigo dyed textiles mm. or some jewelry mm. but things that are Mostly handcrafted mm. in smaller quantities mm. with good care and thought. Mm. How do you usually find these uh, craftsmen makers to work with? Sometimes we visit trade shows, exhibitions, mm-hmm. or craft markets all around Japan. Mm. But quite often we get introduced to the new makers oh. through already existing existing um, makers and artists Mm -hmm. which is really nice because Mm -hmm. they understand what we do Mm -hmm. and they also understand what the other artists and makers are trying to achieve Mm -hmm. so often we match mm, quite mm, well that mm, way when yeah. we when we are introduced that way. Oh yes, that's a nice it, way and probably yeah. we share the same values for yeah. things as well. Mm. See, that's nice. So Hiki, can you share with us how and why you started Ugrisu? When I started Ugrisu, it was two thousand and nine. It actually it's it's actually turning fifteen this summer. Wow. Back then I didn't think that Japanese products would be popular mm. by people outside of Japan. Mm. But I learned that people are actually interested mm. and they would like to bring those Japanese products into their everyday life. Mm-hmm. But I did a little bit of a search and noticed that there are many Japanese websites already back in 2009 but most websites were only in the Japanese language they had no English pages and even if they have online stores Mm. no stores seem to ship overseas so I used to get asked from people living outside of Japan who doesn't who don't speak Japanese language they asked me what is this product? Mm-hmm. How can you buy it? Where can you buy it? And I just realized that there was not many options for mm-hmm. them to to find Japanese products mm-hmm. or to be able to order, to, to be able to obtain it. Yeah. So I thought, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. And I really wanted to um, introduce all the beautiful and practical Japanese products that I use in everyday life to people outside of Japan. Mm. So that's how I started Gugisu. Yes, and I also remember you had a blog, right? Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) Were you getting some inquiries from the blog as well, like what you used in your home and things like that? Actually, my blog, Mm -hmm. which I started in 2009, Mm -hmm. was the main reason right i think that's quite a like important yeah taking a very important role for us mm -hmm. in that era right 2008 2009 yes everyone had a blog where we could reach out to the the rest of the world there was a really lovely blog community Mm -hmm. at that time which Mm -hmm. i kind of made no one blogs these days yeah (laughs) yeah, so all on social media now mm. I never expected to, you know, to make my blog. To, I didn't expect my blog to be anything, mm-hmm. really. I didn't even think anyone would really read it. <laughs> but I thought I would start the blog mm-hmm. because I had not used, I was not using English. And I thought I really need to try and keep it up. Mm. So I came up with this idea of having a blog in English. Mm. Um, I was taking photos in my film camera, mm-hmm. which was my hobby back then, and I wanted to share them. Mm-hmm. It was kind of just like a, my creative outlet. Mm-hmm. I didn't care if anyone would read it, see it, or you know, enjoy it. I was doing it for myself. Mm-hmm. 
But then um, Instagram didn't exist um, mm. in 2009. And it seemed that a daily Tokyo scene mm. was still kind of mysterious to many yes. people who had not been in Tokyo. Mm. And I would post photos of residential mm. areas in Tokyo mm -hmm. that were that seemed attractive to me but you know my family would say why are you taking <laughs> the photos of the street yeah. <laughs> it's not being attractive but you know I didn't care and people seemed to enjoy those things yeah. I thought many people said oh I never expected Tokyo to be like this you know like I would talk about my favorite cafes or mm -hmm. Favorite shops, <laughs> yes. and people said, "Wow, that's so beautiful!" Mm. And you know, they seemed to enjoy seeing what they never expected to see. Yeah. So that led me to Yogoisu. Mm. I don't know pretty much. Mm. So you were also capturing some of the things you like, like handmade yeah. items yeah. or things in your home, mm -hmm. and then. You started getting some inquiries for those yeah. things. Oh, interesting. I first sharing links to the website oh. for the makers mm -hmm. or to the shops who sell who sold them. Mm. But they said, Oh, I can't read it. <laughs> you know, maybe today you can use Google Translation. Yeah. But back then it wasn't mm -hmm. as easy as it is today. And you know, the online stores are only in Japanese language mm -hmm. and I even asked some of the shops and see, can someone order from overseas? Mm -hmm. would, would you ship them overseas? Mm -hmm. And they said, no, we don't. Yes. Oh. So, oh, that's a pity. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, I looked around in my home and realized that so many things that I was using even 15 years ago, mm -hmm. they were... Japanese products and they had been many of them had been made for a very long time mm -hmm. like you know Kaya kitchen clothes mm -hmm. it's a speciality mm -hmm. from Nara but I oh. use it every day and you know there's just simple things that I never really thought that anyone would want to buy mm -hmm. you know kitchen cloth from first, Japan yeah. but people love them yes. yeah. they say it's the best mm. so I there are many, many products that I continue to sell, mm. you know, for 10 years, 15 years, mm. which I really like mm. because we at Gisu, we don't select things because something is in trend. Mm. It trends doesn't last, right? It's like quite a short list, but you prefer like timeless. Yes, mm. timeless is mm. a good word, isn't mm. it? We would rather avoid mm. if something is in trend mm -hmm. because if something is in trend, the trend can end. Yes. But even if the trend ends, mm -hmm. people need to continue making those things. Yeah. And I'm talking more about the you know traditional makers mm -hmm. rather than individual mm -hmm. artists. Mm -hmm. But there are many, many small businesses mm -hmm. that have been that they've been continuing over generations mm -hmm. many techniques have been passed down mm -hmm. over generations and they still need to continue mm -hmm. so when you were have when you had your blog mm -hmm. you were sharing like all the items that you like that's handcrafted in japan and then you realize how something that you use on a daily basis mm -hmm. is so hard for people out living outside of Japan to to buy, purchase them, right? Mm -hmm. So then after realizing that then there's this opportunity, in a way it's an opportunity, but you're trying to also help your friends, your blog community mm -hmm. to, to kind of yeah. achieve this item. So how did you first start like the online store, for example, from running a blog to the yeah. At the time, I had just left my day job mm. and started working freelance as mm. a web designer. Mm -hmm. So I was working from home. And so I had the time mm. 
to start my blog. Mm. Although I was busy with my work, I had many spare times mm. that I didn't have to sit around. If I had been in working for the company, mm. even if I had the waiting time, I still had to be there pretending yes. to yeah. I was doing some work. <laughs> <laughs> I was lucky to be able to use mm. that time for my blogging. And then when I realized mm. the, the need for Japanese mm. products, mm. I came up with an idea of starting an online store. Mm. But because I was a web designer, mm. creating an online store was very easy mm. for me. Oh, um, that's great. The very first Uguisu online store mm. was a lot more simple mm. than the I just made it quickly. Mm. Um, so it, after one week, mm. I had my store and people started ordering straight away. After one week? Yes. Wow. And everyone was like, oh, you know, do you have this? Uh, I know. And then I also thought, oh, if people love these things, mm -hmm. how about these? You oh. know, I love this stuff. Yes. Maybe people... Are, Outside of Japan, would you know? My, maybe my blog readers would also love them. Yes, awesome. and then they yeah. they, they like them. Oh. So continuously like that, I started to grow my collection, mm -hmm. and then that it's that's the start. Yes, of okay. yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. that's interesting. So. You were saying that you started this in two thousand nine mm -hmm. when there was very little like. Even social media was just starting out and it was very hard for people to buy these things um, mm -hmm. from overseas, right? So compared to, you know, it's been 15 years of running Uguisu, how, how has things changed for you, Gio? Yeah, that's changed. Well, Japanese products mm. are so much more recognized, mm. acknowledged. Mm. So Japanese products are no longer such hard to find product mm -hmm. even if you don't live in japan even if you don't understand japanese language there are i think many beautiful stores who have great selection of japanese items mm -hmm. japanese crafts or japanese artists items not just in other countries but also in japan japanese products are more popular it is kind of like a trend to have Japanese crafted items, mm -hmm. Japanese artists and made things. But back then, I felt that Japanese traditional or Japanese crafts are kind of old fashioned. Mm -hmm. People didn't really, people didn't really like to have them. Mm -hmm. Maybe because there was not much, not so many options mm -hmm. for. Uh, Japanese crafts that would fit in the modern living, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. we said before. So Japanese product, mm -hmm. even in Japan, started to become more and more popular, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. But it means people don't need to come to Uguisu mm -hmm. to find Japanese products. Mm -hmm. Or I don't know how I did. I haven't asked my customers, mm -hmm. but. We always ask when we select items for Gusu if there's enough meaning mm -hmm. for us to have those items. Mm -hmm. Even if we find something we really love, mm -hmm. if it is available at so many other places, mm -hmm. we always ask, do we need to have them in Gusu? Mm. Like people can find them elsewhere. No. And other people are already carrying them. Mm -hmm. We should let them do, oh. you know, their job mm -hmm. because they do it beautifully already. Mm -hmm. We don't need to do it. Does it make sense? Yeah. So I, I think like I mean, from a consumer point of view, like let's say I love shopping in Greece ever since you had the yeah. store, and if I had to buy a special gift for a friend, I would go on to <laughs> Greece, and I I like to buy like. Like, you know, for set multiple friends, maybe for Christmas at once. So if you carry like a wide selection, even if there's another shop somewhere else mm. that 
carries that product, right? Like I'd rather buy them all from like one place that has a certain taste. It's easier to know that, okay, if I go to Ogrisu, I can find this taste that I like, this style, this aesthetics, rather than having to go around and shop and then find that opportunity to meet the right product. But it's almost like you're sharing with me what you found, right? Mm. You're sharing with your your consumer, your customers, what you already spend the time to find, to test out. Mm-hmm. To so, I think we have a confidence, like in shopping at Ugrisu, that is different. In a way, like the hearing what you said, like you have run Ugrisu for fifteen years, and now really traditional craft over the years, we have witnessed how mm-hmm. popular it has become. Yeah. But in a way, you are part of. You are also part of the reason why it's popular, right? Because I think your blog in mm. 2009, I mean, that played a big part. I'm sure I know a lot of people who, who know knows your blog. And would you like to share the name of your blog? It's called Jolly Goo. Mm-hmm. I, also, is it still around? I think it? so. Oh, I haven't God. checked so, so many. Nice. I don't know when the last time I <laughs> looked at it, but I'm, I haven't deleted it. Oh, so that's it nice. should be right. So I think I know a lot of people who know you through the blog as well. Mm. And I also had a blog at, around yeah. the same time. So we all kind of like were like early adopters of blogging, I think, in Japan to show the the scenes, like daily scenes of Japan mm. at a time where it was not that available mm-hmm. but now it's also a different era right where yes. you have it all <laughs> over and people are doing it so well the all the documentation yeah. the reels so it's a really different experience now as well and even for products so mm-hmm. i i can imagine how you feel about um mm-hmm. you know like is this thing because you want to have you want to carry unique products in your store mm-hmm. so i'm sure it's harder than it used to be to find something unique because mm. it's available. Yeah. It's it's more popular. So it people are sharing it all over the mm-hmm. world. And but yeah, so I think definitely that availability is good and that at the same time for yeah. things like that. Yeah. Yeah. In a way it's good. Mm. I mean, I think it's good for the makers, mm. definitely. So I'm not criticizing mm. anything. It's really nice to hear your thoughts on that. Um, I also sometimes, when looking for gifts mm. for different people, I know I really like something, but this shop doesn't have other things that I like, mm. and I would have to go to uh, different stores. Yeah, and then I end up ordering from maybe five or six different shops. Yes. But if I can purchase everything that I like in one store. You know, it would save my time yes. and also save packaging mm. or you know, save efforts and handling everything. Yes. So I am glad <laughs> you mentioned yes. that. Yes, and um, I hope you will continue because if you decide, oh, you know, it's really sold elsewhere, so we're not going to sell mm. it, I think that will affect your customers. So yeah. I hope you just like mm. what, so the continue to share what you love and and also when you first started like you were sharing like for example like you were saying the towel from Nara was it yeah yeah Kaya like things like that I'm sure you can still get it anywhere because it's really a daily um, mm-hmm. you know for daily use right so some things are common but yet to have it in your shop because you love it you love using it on your own and you recommend it Mm -hmm. I think even that recommendation is nice for people who are new to that product like oh Mm -hmm. Kiki said this is good it must be good you know it's almost like you're just recommending these items to us yeah Yeah. because it's not just I'm recommending Mm. Uh, the fact that it has been carried for 15 years yeah I think it tells a lot yeah Um, why would I have would we have the same mm. kitchen clothes for 15 years? Mm. Um, it's because customers choose them. Mm. People keep coming back mm. and people, you know, purchase them for the first time and they try it mm. and they will come back. Yes. So we have a lot of products like that. Mm, um, that's nice. Traditional candles, um, also um, salt, like similar reasons mm. yes people repeat, repeat orders mm. right i think that's the nice part mm. also like you know which product has become a part of their lives yes <laughs> it's not 
a one-off. Yeah, it's not a one-off. Mm-hmm. And I think that relates back to what we were uh, speaking, we were talking about earlier about trends, like mm-hmm. about traditional craft being very trendy yeah. uh, in the recent years. Like, But there's also a little um, kind of risk to trends like that, right? Yeah. Because it can get... When the demand is very mm-hmm. high and then the makers probably push themselves, maybe they have to, mm, to make, make more. more. And then when the trend goes down again, then they have already set up everything to mm. to make more, right? They may be stuck with they so many stock. They might be stock. stuck with either stock or maybe they have expanded just yep. to to cater to that kind of volume. Yeah. So I think that's a fear as well, right? Mm-hmm. Like when trend comes in. And so Uguisu, you were sharing with me that you believe in something more timeless so that mm-hmm these products will continue to support the, the craft community, like yeah. the makers, but maybe like long term, not not just like buying because it's trendy, but yeah. something to be part of your mm-hmm. daily life and yeah. repeatedly use them. Yes, we think it's very important. Mm, definitely. Mm. Mm. So, but it's still a very, I mean, it's nice to see that more people know about Japanese craft for sure, right? It's yeah. definitely so, such a different... Um, sure well now compared to yeah. 15 years ago yes yeah. it's it's much easier mm. it's really easy to you know open up social media mm. and, and maybe search hashtag japanese products or i don't know what the keywords but mm. you can easily access to mm. the maker mm. um, people can even purchase directly from you know the maker through on Instagram or other right. social media. Sometimes, sometimes, because sometimes I'm sure a lot of makers mm. would rather Which is not, good. Yeah. Um, you know, good for, you know, both customers mm. and the you know, makers. Yes. And I think there's probably, if, I'm, t- I mean, even though it sounds like, oh, it's very, it's a lot more accessible now, there's still a lot of uh, works by makers that mm. are often sold out or not available. Mm. So there are, because now your audience is the whole world, right? Yeah. So the, it's almost impossible to meet the demand as well when you're talking about right. those individual makers. Yeah. Yeah. So I think maybe, I don't know if it's too much to say, but shop mm-hmm. also need to have responsibility mm-hmm. yes. for the makers, mm-hmm. for the craft mm-hmm. industry mm-hmm. because it, you know you need to support traditional crafts mm-hmm. and traditional makers oh. and small businesses mm-hmm. they need to be able to continue doing what they mm-hmm. do we also need to continue doing what we do but there is also some kind of responsibility mm-hmm. when you work with those makers and exercises. So um, we are very sensitive mm. about those things. Mm. Can you share more about the responsibility part, for example? How like how do you be more sensitive to the arrangement of working with some of these smaller makers, like artists and like artisans? Something like what you said, mm. like if something becomes too much of a trend, Mm -hmm. some makers may have to expand, Mm. make more than they would normally do or are able to. Mm. Demand is too big. They need to, they may need to change. Mm. Um, It would really affect their business. Mm -hmm. But Um, our makers usually do not change. (sighs) So I like I like their styles. They they know, they understand mm. how to maintain their business mm. because they have done this for, you know, sometimes mm. over 200 mm. years. They know there's a trend mm. and trend can go, mm. come and go. But not everyone is like that. Mm. So the, we try to manage. Mm-hmm. We just... Always have that in my in mm, our mind. Yes, like whether it works mm. for them or not, it's yeah. sustainable, right? I think um, mm. ultimately you just want the business relationship mm. to be sustainable long term rather than, or oh, just when everything, you know, like 
like it's very trendy and so mm. and then then stop working with them completely. Like you rather not have yeah. that kind of pattern. Mm. I think that is because, like what you said earlier, like we tend to forget sometimes as consumers buying things like like. We tend to not think of who made it or who packed it, you know, things like <laughs> who that. Who Who did it? So, but then working directly with the makers, I think you're, you're more considerate about their livelihood as well. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what like one like cut, cut shops have to be more aware of when working with mm. the real people who are making the things. Yeah, right? yeah, not just like machines. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Sometimes some makers the sales is not the first priority mm. but to be able to sustain mm. uh, to maintain um, their business itself it's more important mm. so um, yeah yes yeah. oh that's interesting and also i was just this question just came up if do you feel that there's any threat from like you know things being like, okay, let's say there's a trend of, like, Japanese traditional crafts. But then do you think that would be, like, if the makers in Japan are not able to meet the demand, there would, would there be, like, a possibility that the bigger companies might turn to other countries to get it made at a lower cost to make similar looking? Mm. Was there yeah. any of these examples coming up recently? I think it can happen. It can happen, right? It can always yeah. happen in any industry. Yeah, there is. So I guess it all boils down to the educa- I mean, educating the, the consumers mm-hmm. as well, right? The awareness of who is yeah. making it and yeah. and the origin and mm-hmm. all that, which is what I think like the blog era was good for, like to share the you know more of the story part. So right. maybe yeah. I was just thinking maybe we'll go to yeah. I think you do some of that as well, right? Like sharing the story behind how well, your that's something that we. Actually, have been trying. Mm. Um, the, there is a journal website oh. that has never gone online. What? It has never gone live, but um, oh, please! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, we should really go back yeah. to it to, mm, definitely. to finish it. Yes, yes. Mm. I think it's also it all boils down to the consumer, right? Like when you. Buy and buy something mm-hmm. that's slightly more for the cheaper, but not made, you know, by like these makers who have spent like years, mm-hmm. you know, honing their skill. Or, yeah, or yeah. You know, the decision making that can really help. Yeah, mm. <gasps> oh, I've forgotten about that. Oh, I look forward <laughs> to seeing the journal, <laughs> but it can be also like a blog. Was it like a blog style, something more? Yeah, mm. but now I feel that it should be a slightly different style because mm. it shouldn't be my too too personal. Yes, yes, but like it's like like an article kind of yeah feeling yeah. about the <laughs> the makers. Yes, and my that. my um old blog was quite personal. Personal, so yeah. I think the journal for Greece should be less personal, mm. but more informative it mm-hmm. should probably be more informative and yeah it's but that's really something that I'm sure all your customers would yeah would like to like even learn about like how things are made or like how the environment that mm. they are made and all that mm. oh uh, you were running like a shop in Rupongi before well I met, when I met mm-hmm. you right like so how was uh, that Lifestyle compared to now in Mexico, like so. Maybe you can share with us a bit how was your shop like in Lopangi? Yes, as as you know, mm. it although it was in Lopangi, mm. it looked as if it was somewhere else. Yeah, the building was so nice. Yes, right? because when I started to go uh, in two thousand and nine, it was an online store mm-hmm. and I was selling only to the international market. Mm. So right. it, I never really thought of having a physical store until I was offered an opportunity to mm. rent the space in this building, which was my very favorite in Tokyo. <laughs> yeah. um, it was a very small space. Mm. 
but I felt I just had to take the space、mm-hmm. to do something, to do something. I wasn't sure, but then I have this online store, so maybe I can make it a physical store. But although it had been about three years since、mm-hmm. I, w- I had started my online、mm-hmm. store, all of my customers were not in Japan,、mm-hmm. not in Tokyo.、Yeah. So it seemed like a crazy idea yeah, <laughs> to start a physical store、mm-hmm. in Tokyo, having you know, no existing customer.、Mm-hmm. Um, to my surprise, so many people from my online My online customer、mm. um, would travel to Tokyo and they would visit us.、Mm. Also, new people、mm-hmm. started to come in. And at the beginning, it was mostly people visiting from overseas,、mm-hmm. but then gradually, local people started、mm. to find me、mm. to be able to meet so many interesting people,、mm. lovely customers,、mm. and new artists. And to interact with customers. So it's a very special and、mm. wonderful experience. Yes, you had a very beautiful shop, and I, I always enjoyed visiting <laughs> and like just hanging out there.、Mm. Yeah, so nice. So, after a few years, how many years were you in this? Did you have this shop? I had it for seven years. Seven years. Yes. I didn't realize it has been what, what, seven years. That's quite long. Yeah, yeah. So it you was. You maintained it. You were open like three times a only, week. It was only three days a week. Three days a week, but that's also quite a lot, I feel, so, for、mm. you to physically run it on your own and you had an online store、yeah. at the same time. Yes. The, my online store had always been the main,、mm. main thing.、Mm-hmm. So most of the l u g u i s a sales was made by. Mm. Made from online sales.、Yeah. But I was able to carry different things、mm-hmm. that seemed to be a little bit difficult to have just online.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, some, some items are hard to sell online. You know, people would hesitate、mm. to purchase something、mm. without actually looking at the product.、Yeah. So it was really great for not just for the g u i s e but、mm-hmm. for our customers、mm-hmm. to be able to have. To have the chance to you know, actually、yes. take a look, to choose in person.、Mm. Now that we don't have a physical space、mm. and running just online,、mm-hmm. I do often think it would be nice to have a space、mm. where people can actually come and visit、mm. to look at our products in person.、Yeah. As We still get emails asking they would like to come and visit Mashiko、mm. if we had a space. Unfortunately, at the moment, we don't.、Mm. But we are hoping something, we would、okay. be able to offer something、mm. in the future. Yes. So, you、yeah, moved from Tokyo to Mashiko、uh, in the recent years. Can you share with us a bit about your experience? Yes. As I was born in Tokyo and raised there and spent most of my life, Only in Tokyo.、Mm-hmm. I had always wondered what the life is like to be somewhere, somewhere else、mm-hmm. um, within Japan. We started traveling to visit our makers and artists、mm-hmm. who are living outside of Tokyo、mm-hmm. and to actually see the way of life,、mm-hmm. the, the way they live and work and all the Beautiful surrounding、mm. and environment. It looked really special,、mm. and we were curious to find out what it's like to actually be there.、Mm. I think it's different from just visiting,、mm. even though we continuously visited Mashiko.、Mm. To, we, had, we had a couple of artists、mm-hmm. in Mashiko that we used to visit. It's definitely different to be here as a visitor、mm. and to actually live here.、Mm. So, we really wanted to experience、mm-hmm. that to find out whether we would fit there、mm-hmm. or you don't know if you don't try. Yes.、Uh, we just had to try. Yes. So, for, for those who are not very familiar with Mashiko, maybe you can give us a brief introduction、mm-hmm. as well. Yes, Mashiko is an. Tochigi Prefecture,、mm-hmm. which is still in the Kanto region.、Mm-hmm. Um, it's about 100 kilometers north of Tokyo. Although it seems close, 
it often seems quite far. Mm -hmm. I often think that I have come really far from home. <laughs> mm -hmm. But sometimes it seems quite close because you just popped in the bus <laughs> in yes. from Akihabara. Yes. And then two hours later you were here. Yes. So in in that sense it's close. Mm -hmm. But um, in many other senses it's far. Mm -hmm. um, it's completely different from yeah. his life in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. But we I really enjoy. Mm. Uh, we both enjoy yeah. it. So living closer to the nature, to feel the delicate change of the seasons. Mm -hmm. We look after the the environment. Mm -hmm. But actually I feel more that the that the nature looks after us. Mm. Yeah. So it, there are many things that the life here teaches us mm. and makes us think mm. like we talked a lot last night yeah mm. that's right so Mashiko I took the bus that is called the Yakimono Liner mm -hmm. which is in English it means like pottery liner mm -hmm. maybe Yakimono is pottery right yeah. so it, Mashiko is well known for its pottery but you're you're also sharing with me that besides pottery there are also craftsmen here mm -hmm. like different types of craftsmen that you got to know when you moved here and got to know their the things they make as well. Maybe you can share about some of those. Yes. Yeah. So Mashiko is one of the biggest pottery production centers mm. in Japan and, and the biggest in the Kanto region. Mm. There are, they say, there are more than 300 artists mm. living in Mashiko. Those artists are mostly potters, mm -hmm. but there are also some wooden craft artists mm. or people who does uh, who do vegetable dyes. Mm. Indigo dyeing is mm. also very big. So it's a very creative place. Mm. Mashiko is also known for a pottery fair, mm. which is held twice a year. Mm. One in spring around the Golden Week, mm -hmm. which is at the beginning of May. And also in autumn, mm. in November. Mm. So many people visit Mashiko during the pottery fairs. When the fair is not on, mm. it is a very quiet town, but it can also be very interesting mm. for people to visit. Mm. So I hope that more people would explore the town mm. and enjoy it themselves. Mm. Well. Yeah, so back to what you were sharing about moving to Mashko and being taken care of by nature. I feel that like the craftsmen and even through their work, they are very connected to nature as mm -hmm. well as like the materials they use, like yes. like indigo dye and like uh, mm. natural dyes and also like wood. So that's kind of a very unique and uh, the characteristics of Japanese craft, right? That is always like sensitive to nature and working hand in hand with the what nature uh, provides right so so you were sharing with me last night as well like how moving here you got to like the the meaning of nature kind of changed for you mm. in a in a way like you have a deeper understanding and yeah so i'm very lucky to be able to wake up in this beautiful home this morning <laughs> and Really, it was like a very peaceful mm. sleep and I felt like I didn't have to worry about, you know, time or anything. And you just feel so well rested. Is that how life is for you most of the time? Like just kind of, uh, you know, yes. peace and quiet? I guess I have now gotten used to it. Mm. Um, once every so often, I wake up and see the beautiful view of those just greens mm. where it turns beautiful color in autumn. Yeah. And even in winter mm. when there is no color, mm. it's a beautiful shade of white and gray and mm. it can be foggy, misty. It's like a beautiful picture mm. that you look at which changes mm. um, throughout the year. Mm. When at nighttime it gets very dark, you don't see anything, but when you look up, mm. there are, you know, countless mm. stars. Mm. Wow. So from moment to moment, 
I realized, wow, this is this is in my daily life. Mm. Um, sometimes I don't. It, it, it seems hard to believe mm. still after four years, mm. but mm. definitely it is helping me a lot mm. to you know relax and mm. like, to be well. Mm. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. Yes, yeah, like it helps with your well-being and yes. I guess mentally and physically mm. everything as mm. well right yeah and you were sharing uh, showing me your garden as well and how you have planted like your beautiful flowers and i think even that is something new for you after moving to much to be able to have a garden and yes well, actually i have always been a garden lover mm. even when i didn't have a garden yes. in my past apartments mm -hmm. that we lived in tokyo mm. sometimes we didn't even have a balcony, mm -hmm. but I used to always mm -hmm. um, grow things mm -hmm. and implant pots. Wow. So to have my own garden mm -hmm. was like a, one of the dreams. Dreams, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, now that I can, you know, play mm -hmm. with the garden mm -hmm. so much that I sometimes mm -hmm. get carried away, but it's, it's something that I really enjoy mm -hmm. um, in my path. In, you know, in my spare time, mm. it makes me relax a lot. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the moving to Machiko changed the way you run Ugrisu. Yes, mainly the the biggest difference is that when I was in Tokyo, I had I was running both online mm. store as well as the physical store. But we closed the store and moved to Machiko. So now we're concentrating on the online sales mm -hmm. so that is the biggest difference and also my husband is now um working with me in mm. Ugrisu so now there are two people mm. um, doing the same you know the, running the same business mm. so it, that is a big difference does he help you do you feel like having a new member in Ugrisu help with like decision making and looking for new products and things like that yes we some parts we he does what i am not really good at oh, okay. you know, like financial yeah so complement mm -hmm. but, um, but uh, we talk about and um, all the plans like how we work with the new artists mm -hmm. or what products we should have from the mm. store and, and all, all the things we decide together. That's great. And you definitely share the same aesthetics and the same values and interests as well, right? Because yes. it's sometimes, sometimes we have different opinions, of mm. course, but mm. it's good to have a different yeah. opinion. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I can be just one side mm -hmm. to focus on yeah. this one. Yes. So he, like he makes me realize. Other possibilities yeah. and options, other uh, other possibilities mm. um, and things. So I think it's definitely doing the good. Yes, mm. yes. It's always nice to have another person to kind of throw your ideas around and yes, and discuss things with. Yeah, them. definitely. Yeah. No, yeah, that's a nice change, yeah. and I think we can see like even for this home that you moved into mm -hmm. like i heard that you were doing a lot of work to kind of renew it and and it's so beautifully set up and you were doing it together as well right like teamwork mm. to set it up yeah it's so beautiful yeah. <laughs> thank yeah. you so is this home like i mean this house would it be like a it's almost like a dream home right when yeah it's so kind to do that <laughs> no? like if you were like i mean many years back in tokyo to to be able to live in such yes, a yes, yes. Uh, spacious uh, home is, is mm. quite amazing change in lifestyle. and yeah. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Like, uh, as you know, mm -hmm. the, the last place we mm -hmm. lived in Tokyo was very small. It's above the shop, right? yes. was it? Okay. We were renting mm -hmm. another apartment mm -hmm. in the same building as a, as a house. Mm -hmm. It was differently made it was making it easier for me to work. Mm. But at the same time, it made me work all the More. time. <laughs> yeah, all the time listening. And yeah. uh, so now you have a separate, like, um, office space, mm -hmm. uh, like somewhere, like, down yes. the road or like uh, somewhere? No, not quite <laughs> down the road, but 
down the road, but it's in it's in the the main area. Okay. So like do you have other plans for Ugrisu, like maybe in the future to have a shop or a showroom or something like that? Yes, we have been trying to find the right mm. bot space um, for us to have a showroom, mm. maybe gallery. Wow. We don't know, but it depends on the space that we find mm. if we were able to find it. Yes, because in the bus right in here, like... I guess that's the main street where all the shops are and there are so many nice Japanese style buildings and homes mm. and shops, right? It really looks very like, well, I guess it's it's really like nicely done. I mean, it's ready to go. Like you just need yeah. to, it, on the surface, like, okay, if you have a shop there, it would be perfect for Ugrisu <laughs> kind of thing. So I really hope we can maybe find mm. a good place in that area maybe and yeah. Yeah, and then more obviously. more people can visit you. <laughs> take the <laughs> uh, Yakimono liner. Yeah. Um, yeah. It would be nice to yeah. um, to meet if if you have a space, mm. you get to meet people. Mm. Um that's something I started I'm starting to miss a little bit. Mm. That's right. Mm. Yeah. So um, um, yes, it would be nice. One day I hope. Yeah. Um, we will have. Do you feel that, like, if there were visitors coming from overseas, that there will be, like, the craftsmen would like to also share their crafts? Like, are they, how is it, like, is that something that people like to also meet new people? Like, you mean local artists? Like, local artists? Huh? Or do they, are they quite prefer to uh, concentrate on their works? And I feel, mm. I'm sure there are many different mm-hmm. artists, but the ones, we work with mm-hmm. or that we communicate with. Yeah, and I feel that they prefer to concentrate oh. on their work rather than meeting other Meet people. Meet the customers face to face. Of course, they almost always be at be at the gallery or shop mm-hmm. when they have an exhibition. Yeah, they would probably rather. Mm, I see. Let. The galleries and do the shops do the, do the work. I see. Yeah. Okay, because I thought that I could w- be wrong. I yeah. haven't asked them. Yeah. <laughs> no, because I was just wondering. It would be interesting to you know. There's so much to learn from you as someone who sell. I mean, collects, select, and sell these craft item. But then I'm sure even speaking to a craftsman directly, yeah. there's also a lot of a different perspective that people can learn and interact, mm-hmm. you know, from that interaction. So I was just imagining if, you know, if people were to come to your shop and there would be, like, some opportunities to meet or, like, yeah. have a workshop or, mm-hmm. you know, Interact have a get in the gallery yeah. space, mm-hmm. that would be something very valuable for, a, yes. yeah, yes, opportunity. I, I, I agree with mm-hmm. you. Oh, yeah. Maybe that's maybe a possibility. in the future, possibly. <laughs> Just dreaming of like, oh, it'll be so nice. Oh, great, so gallery shop. Yes. Yep. So much possibility. Yeah. Yes. It's fun to think of what we okay. would be able to do. Mm. Right. But you also said that like, you took a few years to settle down yes. here properly, yeah, it, right? So, mm, our initial plans after moving to Mashiko was, mm. was to travel around Japan to, you know, mm. to meet more makers, others, mm. to find, you know, local crafts or to have pop-up events mm. overseas. But about four weeks after we moved to Mashiko, mm. the world went into pandemic. Yeah. As mm. It was covered for the first three years mm. well, of our time. So things, the plans had to be changed. But to look back, maybe it was good in a way because it took a lot longer for us to really settle in. Mm. I guess it's because it's such a different environment Mm. that it's not like living from one place to another Mm. within Tokyo. Yes. our lifestyle changed a lot. Yes. And we didn't know that very many people. Mm. So yes, we, we feel that we have finally settled mm. after now four years. Wow. 
that turned and it was good that we were able to concentrate on, you know, getting used to the new life here. Mm. Yeah, mm. that's a blessing in this guy's right? Because yeah. if you were to be able to travel, then you probably like kind of skip that part of really yeah. having to figure out the, it, all the important mm, stuff before. It may have been like, we live here, but we're not here. Yeah. Like, so ooh, now we, we're here, yeah. but our minds yeah. maybe elsewhere. Yeah, so I'm um, glad you were like, more rooted here yeah. now, and then you can then plan yeah. other stuff. Yeah. I feel because of that, we have now become a part of the community. Yes, that's right. I important. think it made us made it easier for us. Oh, well, wow, that's to be, to be part of it. So you have many like friends living around you, or how the community is mostly pot- potters, right? You were saying. Yes, we have a lot of potter yes, friends. Yes, because there are many potters. Yes, um, we meet new people. Mostly through our Potter friends, mm. so you know, yeah. naturally, yes. our friends are mostly Potters. Yeah, it's uh, nice, so um, amazing. And also, I thought that what was interesting was most of the places we hear like, oh, young people doesn't want to do craft anymore. You know, like there's a lot of that. Mm. No one's taking over like craft businesses, but like. For Mashko, it sounds like there are also uh, many young potters, right? Yes. Who are here. So I think that's such a nice, mm. a vibrant community in the sense that they're still uh, externally making works and exhibiting and mm. you know, so much. Yes, it's mainly because life. there is there is a pottery school mm. where people can learn for two years. Mm. Um, it, it's it's. It's run by government, oh. so they get to learn in you know, all the techniques. And it is mainly the purpose of the school is so that you know there will be more people who will work in the industry oh, like, to uh, promote pottery industry, mm. so that it can be it can be kept. Mm. But you're also saying that many of these potters, are like more like artisans like artists on their mm. own right so they're not really there isn't any like small factory here or there are there are, still there some, are some but or like a small uh, workshop kind of thing where yes, they produce some businesses they make you know more or bigger bigger batches of yes, works yeah. mm. but it's, it is true that most people prefer to be a be artist mm-hmm. rather than working for you know other companies or factory. Mm-hmm. So the law of these potters also like will have exhibition all around Japan, right? Not just in they're not just selling their works in Mashko, but do they do uh, yes. Most people tend to show their work mm-hmm. or sell their work not in Mashiko mm-hmm. but elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Oh most people actually mm. prefer to sell them yeah. elsewhere. Oh, yeah. I see. So sometimes it's hard to find artists from Mashiko. Mm-hmm. There, if if you want to purchase their work, it's hard to find it in Mashiko. Oh, good. So, so it's but easier they, to find yeah, in see. galleries or stores in Tokyo mm-hmm. or in in other parts of Japan. Oh, that's interesting. So mm-hmm. they moved to Mashiko because of the community. I guess so, and also because it is a pottery town mm-hmm. for many, many years, it's easier for them to find their studio mm-hmm. where they can build, you know, climbing kilns or mm-hmm. wood fire mm-hmm. kilns. Mm-hmm. And also it's easier probably to obtain all the clays or, mm-hmm. you know, the pottery materials. Mm-hmm. And also... Around here, you can still dig pottery clay. Oh, really? So many artists, they actually... From their garden? <laughs> from the garden. <laughs> but, um, I think there are some spots oh, that they can nice. go and dig mm. soil or... Wow. Many of the artists that we know, they actually travel around mostly within the Mashiko and Tochigi mm-hmm. prefecture. They go and sort materials themselves. Like wow. they would pick up you know, these rocks mm. from 
many different places and they actually create their own glazes mm-hmm. or wow. you know they even process they mm-hmm. you know all the materials mm-hmm. I'm yeah. very, you know, oh but that's so interesting yeah you know, once again yeah. it's like from nature and just yes, going yeah. out to so get they them. do everything themselves mm-hmm. like from you know scratch um so you know, it's a true organic mm. pottery. Yes, wow, mm. that's so nice. People do similar things, mm. even if they're not a potter. Mm. Um, I think, I don't know if it is common only in Japan, but many people, you know, like to source materials themselves. They go into mm. the mountain and, mm. um, to, you know, collect. Materials, materials that they use to weave baskets, or you know, you know to make textiles, yes. um, or some jewelry pieces, mm. or, um, you know, to do vegetable dye, yes, things like that. I think it's something that you know people used to do in the ancient times. Yes. So many things are done. In the ancient way, mm. Mm. like it's probably people who live in this kind of areas, right? Like the countryside they, mm. they grew up. I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm, I think it's like passed down from the past, right? Like yeah. passed down traditions, mm. like ways, some knowledge, like what you can yeah. use and stuff. It's it's almost mm. like it is naturally mm. inside them. Yeah, and yeah. So it's like if you if there was something that you would need mm. that you you know, something that you're short of and oh, well, you have to order something. Yeah, you buy um, from a shop. Or yeah. <laughs> like if it was in Tokyo, you know, you would, um, I would order online from Amazon and mm-hmm. then it would arrive the, the, the next day mm-hmm. or even the same day if, oh, if yeah. you're in Tokyo. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people would probably choose to go out outside to find something that they can, you know, use. Mm-hmm. Like to make into it. Yes, it, it's very creative. <laughs> yeah. Super creative yeah. in many ways. Like their first instinct is not to, to buy. That's yeah. the nice part, right? Like mm. to just just turn to what you have first and then like use it. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's, that's really good. Mm, it could be because the, there are not many shops mm, around. Yes. But for example, when we lived in, Rupongi, mm-hmm. um, we needed something. For example, a uh, light bulb. Yeah. Uh, it just, oh, we, we have to have the new light bulb. Yes. But, you know, there was Don Quixote. Yes. <laughs> so it's open 24 hours. Yeah. So even if it's, you know, midnight, mm-hmm. we can still get We can yeah. just walk down the road in five minutes and, you know, find anything. Yes. Um, so that was natural to us before, mm. but it's not natural to everyone mm. um, if you don't live in Tokyo. Mm. It's such a natural, like a common thing, but mm. I realized that, you know, we didn't know that there was life <laughs> outside <laughs> of that. <laughs> oh. So I prefer it this way. Yeah. Sometimes it can be inconvenient. But convenience is not top priorities mm. anymore. Mm. Mm. The not everything has to be convenient. Yes. Mm. Wow. So you must, I mean, I think you probably have transformed a lot, right? Like your mindset <laughs> yes. and everything. Yes, I feel like living in, in a total, totally different, different person. person. <laughs> wow. But that's, that's amazing, isn't it? Like to finally not be, you know, worried about oh I need this immediately or you know like just nothing that, needs to be yeah, so urgent immediately <laughs> yeah, so, so like but it used to be like just oh, that's so normal like that's yeah, what your program yeah. was so so now to be able to break free from that I think it's it's amazing like coming to Mashiko and mm. just just reset you know almost like oh, yeah that's great so yeah. I feel like I'm a lot more Much. relaxed mm. um, which is good. And still be able to manage your business, yeah. you know, and keep it going. But mm-hmm. like your, probably your stress level is completely oh, it's different. It's much, much lower. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
the screen. It definitely is lower. Yeah. You can kind of just decide on your own schedule and timing, right, for things as well. Mm -hmm. Kind of like there's no rush, you know. That's also. Yeah. <laughs> well, when, when things need to be mm -hmm. rushed mm -hmm. for yours, we of course do. <laughs> <laughs> In a rush. <laughs> um, you know, yeah. at the scene. Oh, well, everything mm. needs to be done in, in super urgently. Mm. So you and you were also saying that there are not many um, like places to go at night, like restaurants and places to eat. So you end up mm. cooking a lot more. So yeah. I think that's also part of the joy, right? Like to be home cooking and, and now with all your new mushroom pottery <laughs> and all crafts, <laughs> yeah, you, you can actually... Really enjoy it, right? Because when we were in Tokyo, we probably go out a lot more and you're not really spending so much time living yeah. in your own home. Yes, yes. And now you can enjoy these things that you mm. love. So I thought that was very nice to see them in use. Yeah. yeah. And, and mm. another good thing I feel being in Mashiko is that the lack of shops and cafes mm. can mean really good because... <laughs> Here, when you want to meet some, hmm. or if you want to catch up with friends, mm -hmm. we don't. No one goes to cafe, mm -hmm. but we would visit oh, their places. Oh, or you would right. invite the re-invite people around, to, mm -hmm. or you know, people would just pop in without you know yeah. letting us know. They would just come around, and we would have tea oh, in the garden. That's so nice. that's cool. Mm -hmm. And everyone does it like that. So oh, you yes. don't really need to say, hey, can let's we catch you like, up. Yeah. Are you free? Yes. And like in Tokyo, we would say, okay, let's make it this day, at this time, at this point. Let's meet here. Yes. And let's do balls. You know, everything is decided. Mm. But here, you yeah. have to do it. Like you, if you're busy, mm. if we know someone is busy, mm. we will just make a very quick visit mm. by, oh, I just came to see your face yes. and say hi. And, yes. and it's nice. Yes. I, I quite like it. Yes. Mm. It's interesting because I feel like when we were in Tokyo, maybe I'm not sure about you, but like Tokyo, we have this feeling like, like if someone was to come to my house without letting me know in advance, I'll be like, ah, Yes, you're not very happy. Not very happy, right? <laughs> but I can imagine like if I were, here and then it, that's the part of the lifestyle is actually suddenly it seems all right like when you're in tokyo do you also have that sense like yeah right? no one would <laughs> come in without like no one would like it right <laughs> like even if you were to do that to someone like yeah everyone seemed to need their space more which is interesting like people yeah. in tokyo even time they want their time mm -hmm. they want their personal time personal space time so, and space are so precious so it's so hard to sometimes like try to arrange to meet even, right, a friend, and then sometimes you can't make it because work. You know, there's always, there's so much calling for your attention yeah. in the city. Like, I need to do this, I need that. Oh, yeah. But here it's like, I guess it's kind of priorities are different and, mm -hmm. and I think the friendship or the, the interaction is actually more, the most important, I would say, like, the friendship is more important than... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, maybe, like, then any other distraction mm. like there's no distraction basically mm. <laughs> but it's not like people would come into your private space without yes. you know look um, mm. oh, I don't know how to put it but like if this was in Tokyo you would feel oh why yes. are you coming in from yeah. without letting us know but here even if people does that you don't feel mm. like you're being um, intruded right like yeah the space yeah. and maybe because the space is a little bigger as well that, like you have yeah. privacy still mm, you, that's probably we can true. host like in yeah. Tokyo we're like you step in and then that's my whole mm. home already so. yeah yeah it's so mm. interesting interesting that's the difference between ci city people and also little yeah. country people pe people's mindset and <laughs> lifestyle right <laughs> so. oh that's the nice part that mm. you get to enjoy mm. after moving here I feel like it's a very different like I don't know so different from Tokyo right? it is I very very yeah. different so relaxed and yeah nice yeah and we were not sure if this kind of lifestyle mm. would you know, fit 
fit lah. Mm. But, you know, we, we're so happy. Yeah. Oh, this is nice. This is better. And yeah. Oh, we like great. this way. Yeah, like at first you were saying like, you also learn a lot of things about yourself, right? Like, yeah. you didn't know how you would react in this situation and then you learn things mm. about yourself along the way. I think that was mm. pretty yeah. interesting. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. So, but then, are there anything that you miss from Tokyo so far? Like, well, I must say all the good restaurants mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, maybe to be able, oh, actually this, I miss the freedom mm. of being able to get to different places mm. on foot. Oh. Or, you know, here you can't do anything if you can't drive. Mm. But, you know, in, in Tokyo, you can walk and get to so many mm-hmm. places. Like a 20-minute walk in Tokyo and 20-minute walk in Mashiko mm-hmm. are so different. Mm-hmm. 20 minutes in Tokyo, 20 minute walk in Tokyo is like nothing. And you can, even if there's one place that you're headed to, Mm -hmm. you know, you can find so many different places that you, you know, walk in and enjoy being inspired. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You know, to uh, Tokyo has so much inspiration Mm -hmm. everywhere. Oh, I remember. And here, it's I also find inspirations from the nature, mm-hmm. um, but it's it's very different. Mm-hmm. So to to be able to to go visit exhibition mm-hmm. museums, galleries, yes. and you know mo- movie theaters, yes, and things like that, they are not available here. So mm-hmm. those things I miss. Mm-hmm. I can always go and take a you know day trip, yes, to, to Tokyo and. Do those things, yeah, and then come back. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's been a great place to live because it's so close to Tokyo mm. as well, so you can get the best of both. Yeah, wow. So moving forward, do you have any plans to visit the rest of Japan to look for new craftspeople? Since now um, everything yes. is opening up again, yes, we're always looking at craft market mm. and. You know, maybe trade shows or to visit artisans or oh. new makers that you can't really meet even in Tokyo. Mm. Do you have any uh, any specific place or craft that you're looking at uh, um, bringing in at the moment? Not anything specific mm. at the moment. Uh, we have a few makers mm. um, that. We have been waiting oh, for the arrivals of their ah, you know, new work. Do you start? Oh, would you be able to share with us some of these new items or not yes, yet? Not yet, but we're expecting more coming mm. later this year. Mm. And what materials are they? One, one is bamboo. One is more traditional. It's called kumihimo. You know. You wear a kimono, mm. so you know obijime. Yes, that's the it's the band that you yes, put the around yeah. the obi. Mm-hmm. So it's called kumihimo mm. braiding. Mm-hmm. So it's been mm-hmm. a wonderful artist who makes beautiful jewelry out of kumihimo. Mm-hmm. We actually have the, their work and just trying the preparing to list them online. Oh, so that will be our art jewelry. Okay. Can you share the name of the artist? Yes, she's called Noriko Yuki. Ah, Noriko Yuki. Mm. Looking forward to see her work. On yes, now. it's really Looks beautiful. Like, oh. I'm very excited oh, to, nice. to share her work. Okay. Is it like accessories, like earrings and stuff? Yes, earrings, brooches, necklaces. Mm. I'm looking forward. Very beautiful. It's traditionally made, but it doesn't look... To traditional, mm. uh, something that you don't see mm. in other craft yeah. craft making. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. yeah, most of the products you, I mean, the items that you select, even though it's made of a traditional technique or craft, mm-hmm. it's always got this modern kind of like 
it, you can use it in the modern day. Yes, you know, that's and it looks that, really, yeah, that's nice. very important for mm. us because there are so many traditional crafts mm. in Japan that we wouldn't really mm. use mm. Um, in our actual life, you know. Yes, yeah, it's, like it's too traditional. Some, yeah, something mm. so beautiful. They don't always fit mm. in your style. Yes, that's right. So it, we always make sure it's something that we would use. Mm. Um, we almost always try the products that we sell. It, does, it can't just be beautiful, but it has to be practical. You know, we, we always make sure that it can be mm. used or enjoy it in mm. people's houses in any country mm. for him. Any lifestyle. Wow, slice. I mean, that this is like your model home almost. I feel like <laughs> I can imagine like all your products fitting into this nice environment. And, and this is a very nice Uber so home. <laughs> almost. I'm sure a lot of people would love to have as well, like to have be able to have all this Japanese craft in their daily lives. Right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I would love to have that too. So, do you have any plans like to bring these beautiful crafts overseas at some point again? Because you had a, a little pop up in yes. Australia the, yes. a few years yeah. back. We would love to do that. Mm-hmm. We we must try. We must start looking okay, okay. Um, <laughs> looking for new opportunities again. Well, definitely you have opportunities to come to Singapore. I oh, yes, feel like yes. definitely you know, come to Singapore because <laughs> really love to I would to definitely I'm more than happy to help to <laughs> <laughs> orchestrate something. But I think all this beautiful craft should be shared and also mm-hmm. like in Singapore we are very a very young country and we do not have a lot of crafts, right? Like traditional crafts. Mm-hmm. So I think now now the new generation, like the working generation is finally able to like truly appreciate and you know have their own homes and Mm -hmm. start bringing some of these items as well so i think definitely it would be such a privilege for us to even be able to see them in person and Um. purchase them so certain that a lot of people would would love (laughs) to have a a yeah Mm. okay so besides you know working with cross people like the way you have been doing now and selling it Online, are there any other plans for Ugrisu that any other kind of collaborations you're interested in? Yes, we have been really wanting to start collaborating with local businesses, Mm -hmm. not individual artists, Mm -hmm. but possibly local small stores or galleries or factories. Mm -hmm. We would like to work more closely with a local Mm -hmm. business. In order to make this small town a more exciting place, mm. I don't know how we can do it, but do we would like to see what we can do yes. to make Mashiko more attractive so yes. that more people would come mm. and visit and to be able to enjoy mm. the time here? Mm. Yeah, I'm sure Mashiko, I think for people who know pottery or like Japanese craft, mm. it's not unfamiliar name, right? Mashiko. I think there are a few people who know it. But yeah. then I think currently, uh, from a visitor's point of view, maybe the transportation is a bit it's very a tricky, bit just tricky mm. and not a lot of information in English. Mm. But actually, it's just so close to Tokyo that you can do a day trip if possible. Mm-hmm. So, so it would be nice to be able to open that up, right? Like yeah. for people to come easily, and then and the shops and local businesses. Are there some local businesses that you are? specifically interested to work with like for example what kind of business are they doing is it more like cafe style or there are many so many shops who sell local ceramics okay um, as well as some really good antique shop Mm -hmm. they collect beautiful vintage items from japan Mm -hmm. that we always like to visit Mm -hmm. And um, there are not many cafes, but small, special, uh, interesting shops mm. that you don't really find in Tokyo. Mm. What kind of collaborations are you thinking of? 
if you were to be have the opportunity to work with them, for example, for like, example. Uh, like would you want to share like some of the products they carry to the to your audience or um, that way of collaboration? We have done one local collaboration mm-hmm. before. There was this beautiful gallery, mm-hmm. which is no longer in business, unfortunately, mm-hmm. but the owner had a very a special, beautiful taste. Mm. Um, they had a wonderful collection of Japanese vintage mm. items. So we collaborated mm. and shared a, her collection mm. of vintage items mm. that are very hard to find, but people always looking for, you know, those special items mm. that, you know, it's difficult to find even if they come and travel to Japan. Mm. So it was a wonderful opportunity mm-hmm. to be able to share beautiful hidden gem mm-hmm. and given place. And you were sharing it on your online, online store yes. and wow, mm-hmm. like a did you do it for like a a period of time to have this? Yes, we were planning to, but mm-hmm. then they sold quite quickly. Oh, so okay, um, so it ended earlier. Yeah. Even. yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is an example of one of the kind of collaborations you can do with a local business. Mm, That was one thing that we did. And Mm. possibly we could do something similar Mm. with other businesses or there may be something else Mm. we can do. But at at this time, we don't have a specific plan. Mm. But we would like it to be something that is not done Mm. by other people Mm. something new something something new uh, something interesting that would bring light and that would be good for for the other business Mm. as well as the mashiko town itself Mm. is it do you hope to bring more visitors ultimately from from this like collaboration like to have more people visit or just to know that what they're doing and but ideally to bring more people, more people in you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what about like um business matching they call it like matching like different like a craft and someone different do you find that interesting like like you know pottery plus coffee or something and they'll come up with something new oh. it's just so fun. <laughs> hmm, maybe just some ideas <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So it was really, yeah, really lovely speaking with you. And usually towards the end of our podcast, we ask this interesting question. I always look forward to hearing everyone's answer. So if you were to go to a visitor island, Mm -hmm. like that, you already have like all your tools to survive. But let's say you have to bring a craft that you maybe love or enjoy. What would that be? It's an interesting question. I mean, it's, I don't know if you can call it a craft, mm-hmm. but um, I would bring a piece of furoshiki, no. which is a piece of square cloth mm-hmm. that can be used so many different ways. It can be a scarf, like if you're in a desert and if you're cold at night, you can mm-hmm. wrap it around your mm-hmm. you know, neck as a scarf. Or maybe if the sun is too strong, you can use it as a shade mm-hmm. or... <laughs> You can use it as like a picnic mat mm-hmm. or tablecloth. Or, uh, you can tie tie it around to make a bag. Mm-hmm. Wow. So it can be a fun and useful item. Yeah. Well. I always bring a piece of plum for a shiki to my travels. Wow. It's very convenient. Yes. Wow. You're really truly, like, that's a truly Ugrisu answer as well, you know, <laughs> because it's like furoshiki is handcrafted and you carry very beautiful furoshiki as well, right, in your shop. Do you still carry it? Uh, yes. There aren't so many left at the moment, mm. but no. we used to have a beautiful collection. Uh, would you be uh, sourcing for more craftspeople yes, who can? Yeah. Cool. Yes. It would like to. I love Furoshiki as well. I've been trying to look for some 
Mm. The ones. <laughs> wow, that's such a lovely answer. And yeah, for those of you who are interested in Furoshiki, maybe you can go on yes. Grace and like find out more. And mm-hmm. there's just so much to learn and explore on your website as well. I think a lot of like for Japanese speakers or people who are familiar with Japanese things, that may seem like oh quite common. But then mm. I think it's still not something that, you know, we in the Western world, English speaking world that we use very often, right? Like Ugri, uh, no, no, sorry, like Furoshiki or Tenugui or these mm. things are actually quite a very uniquely Jap- Japanese items that are, you know, with a history on how people mm-hmm. used to use them. And, but it can still be used in a modern daily life. So I yes. really like all these items mm. as well that mm-hmm. you select. So thank you so much, Hiki, for uh, joining us today and having me in your beautiful home once again. So nice to catch up after so, five so, years. So nice to catch up. Yes, and it's like, I think after five years or maybe after the pandemic, after every moving to Mashko, I think we have a new, it's almost like a the start of a new chapter i feel like yeah. for <laughs> for all of us right it's like oh yeah uh, much exactly. more peaceful and like a positive and yeah. exciting <laughs> new journey that you can take with mm-hmm. with ugrisu as well i look forward to seeing all the new collaborations or cross people that you will be working with yeah. and really look forward to all the beautiful craft that you bring to the rest of the world thank you so much for thank having us so and for thank you so me. much for tuning in everyone <laughs> and you. Uh, you can listen to our podcast on Spotify Apple Podcasts and YouTube the full video of this podcast will be available on our Patreon so see you in the next episode bye bye see ya. <laughs>